Today we will look at all equity ETFs and find out if they truly are one ETF to rule them all. And we will begin right now. The idea of being able to buy just one ETF to meet all your diversification needs sounds almost too good to be true. Let me tell you, there are die-hard all-equity ETF fans that will defend that position, but is it really defendable? Are these one-stop super ETFs as great as many claim them to be? Does it even make sense to have a single ETF as your sole investment? There is no doubt that these ETFs will indeed bring some very serious diversification to your portfolio. On the downside, you will see lower dividends as they are more of a total return play than a specific dividend or growth play. Don't get me wrong, these are some good ETFs as you will see when we take a deeper dive into a few of them. As for holding a single ETF as your sole investment, no matter how good that ETF is, that is just not a smart move. And I, yeah, I will tell you why. However, before I do, let me know in the comments if you currently have any investments outside of Canada. Personally, I do hold a few American stocks. I also want to take a second to give you all a massive thank you for spending time here today in our home of free financial content. So make sure to subscribe so you do not miss a single moment. The one ETF in a portfolio is a classic example of putting all your eggs in a single basket. The ETF itself may be very well diversified and thus the opposite of the single basket problem, but that ETF is run by a single company. If something went wrong in that company and it impacted that investment, you are taking 100% of the brunt. If that company went under, you could theoretically lose everything. Hmm, shades of Celsius? Luckily, there are more than one all equity ETFs. Thus, if you are a super fan, you can at the very least split your investing between many of these ETFs. Would I ever consider investing in only all equity ETFs? The answer is no. I think they are some fantastic opportunities to add diversification, especially to foreign and emerging markets. And I will take advantage of that aspect of these ETFs. However, I am more of a classic trader, and even if I were happy with the overall risk profile, they would take away a lot of the fun I get out of investing. However, if I was brand spanking new to investing, they would be an excellent choice to dip my toes in the water. It is time to get excited as we are going to look at some of these all equity ETFs and see just what makes them an attractive investment option. We will begin with BMO and ZBAL, Zibal, which is their BMO balanced ETF, which is a more balanced approach with investments in global equities and fixed income ETFs. With this one, Canadian equities is the main focus with 52% of the fund in Canada. The US has a 29% stake in this fund. The remaining exposure includes Japan, the UK, China, France, Switzerland, Germany, and Australia. The fund has a market cap of 117 million and a management fee of 0.18%. When it comes to dividends, they have a yield of 2.108% that is paid out quarterly in the amount of 22 cents per share. Have I mentioned these ETFs are not really dividend plays? For their growth, in January 2021, they were priced at $34 and they closed out 2021 at $37.66 for a return on investment of 8.6%. Adding in the dividends, their total return for 2021 was 10.7%. Now, 2021 was a fantastic year for the S&P 500, who had a return of 26.62%. In 2021, Zeeball really underperformed the S&P 500. This one, well, yeah, it kind of has me a wee bit concerned. So far in 2022, Z-Ball is down 12.8% compared to the S&P's 11.28%. So a little better, and I assume that it's because bonds have been doing better. This is one I would love to revisit in a year or two to see how they perform in a non-bear market environment. Next, we are going to Vanguard and VEQT, which is their Vanguard All Equity ETF portfolio. They are primarily focused on delivering good long-term capital growth with a heavy equity-focused portfolio. 
the fund contains, get this, 13,586 different stocks both individually and mostly in ETFs, which is absolutely amazing. 44% of these stocks are from the US, 30% from Canada, and the rest are included in Japan, the UK, China, France, Switzerland, Australia, Germany, and Taiwan. This one ETF gives you a nice amount of international exposure. The fund has a market cap of $1.1 billion and a management fee of 0.22%. When it comes to dividends, they do have a small yield of 1.538% that is paid out annually in the amount of 64.2 cents per share. Let's look at their growth. In January of 2021, they were priced at $30.94 and they closed out 2021 at $37.72 for a return of investment of 21.9%. Adding in the dividends, their total return for 2021 was 23.4%. In 2021, VEQT did slightly underperform the S&P 500. Nonetheless, that is not a bad return. So far in 2022, VEQT is down 12 0.8% compared to the S&P's 11.28%. So once again, the S&P 500 is doing a wee bit better. These ETFs we are looking at today are relatively new, so we will not really get a good test of their returns until we return to a normal market. However, I think this is not a bad showing at all. Vanguard is one of the better names in the ETF game, so I do have a little extra confidence based on that, well, on that alone. We are going to move on to BlackRock and XEQT, which is the their iShares Core Equity ETF portfolio, which is a broadly diversified exposure to equity securities via a portfolio of ETFs. They hold ITOT, XIC, XEF, and IEMG within this portfolio, which provides a 46% US and 25% Canadian exposure with additional exposures to Japan, the UK, Switzerland, France, Australia, Germany, China, and the Netherlands. Once again, we are here hitting all the international exposure bells with this one. The fund has a market cap of 1.3 billion and a management fee of 0.18%, which is not too shabby. When it comes to dividends, they also have a small yield of 1.597% that is paid out quarterly in the amount of 19 cents per share. For their growth in January 2021, they were priced at $23.35 and they closed out 2021 at $28.23 for a return an investment of 20.9%. Adding in those dividends, their total return was 22.5%. For 2021, XEQT also slightly underperformed the S&P 500. Vanguard did do a tiny bit better, but they're really, they're really, in my opinion, too close to call. So far in 2022, XEQT is down 14.1% compared to the S&P's 11.28%. So once again, the S&P 500 is doing a bit better. BlackRock is also a very trusted name in the ETF game. So this is one I am certain will do well in the future. It is now time to look to the Horizons and HGRO, which is their Horizons Growth Tri ETF portfolio. This one is an equity focused long term capital growth play. They also hold ETFs, and their distribution looks like 55% US, 16% Canada, and the rest are international exposures. The fund has a market cap of 168 million and a management fee of 0.00%. You don't exactly get this one for free because the ETFs contained within do have fees that are charged against the fund and they're removed before they report their returns. So for your perspective, you don't see anything, but there are fees there. When it comes to dividends, they have an insanely low yield of 0.022%, which is paid out annually in the form of 0.13 cents per share. For their growth in January of 2021, they were priced at $12.18 and they closed out 2021 at $15.23 for a return on investment of 25.0%. When we add in the dividends, their total return for 2021 is still 25.0%. Gotta love significant digits. They are just slightly underperforming the S&P 500. So far in 2022, HGrow is down 15.2% compared to the S&P's 11.28%. Once again, this will be one I would love 
love to revisit in the future. Horizons is a good company, so it will be interesting to see if this ETF grows. We looked at four of these all equity ETFs and three of them don't look too bad at all, but I'm not sold yet on the BMO one. I wouldn't mind adding one of these to my portfolio for the international exposure and it will more than likely be VEQT or XEQT. I do think they are going to do well in the future and I want that international exposure. Of course, be sure to do your own research before you jump in and become a truly international investor. The fun does not have to end here because you can always watch my video on undervalued stocks that I have linked in the top left corner or right below that YouTube will show you a video that they think you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.